Well, we welcome Ambassador John Bolton. Good to see you, Ambassador. Glad to be with you. Um, how do we stop North Korea? Well, I think ultimately the only real solution is to reunite the two Koreas, uh, to persuade China that it's in their best interest that this reunification occur. Uh, we've seen too many examples over the past 25 years where China's played a double game, where they've said, yes, we agree, we don't want North Korea to have a nuclear weapon, but they haven't really put on the pressure that they could. Maybe this time will be different. I know the White House is optimistic, uh, uh, and I hope they're right, but uh, I, don't, I don't know that we've seen the evidence of it yet. Ambassador, how do we stop a North Korean missile strike? Because Fox News' Britt Hume, he says communist North Korea may be able to attack the U.S. Let's listen. As it appears that North Korea is now closer than ever to putting together a nuclear weapon that they would have the ability to deliver even to the west coast of the United States. It seems to me they have been very shrewd indeed at scaring the daylights out of our allies in the region and the world community, as it's sometimes called and have thereby been able to pr pursue their nuclear ambitions apace while extracting concession after concession in deal after deal with the West, in which they basically come out ahead. I mean, okay, so we know China routinely fails to enforce sanctions. You know, banks and companies continue to trade when do deals with China. I mean, excuse me, North Korea. So do, how do we stop a military, how do we stop a military strike, a missile strike from North Korea? Well, if it got to that point, and I think they are getting increasingly close to it, the, the president would have to consider preemptive military action because any president's first responsibility is to protect the people of the United States. Uh, that could well lead to war on the peninsula, catastrophic collapse of the North Korean government, a lot of innocent civilians in Seoul, South Korea, and elsewhere uh, being killed. Uh, that, that's why, even though time is growing very short, and I mean very short, uh, trying to work out a diplomatic solution with China is important. China has enormous economic leverage on North Korea. It supplies over 90 percent of North Korea's oil, large amounts of food and other humanitarian supplies. Uh, what China's feared, though, is if they apply that pressure, the government will collapse uh, and the United States will, f will have its troops on the Yalu River. Actually, we don't want our troops on the Yalu River. There's a deal here that, uh, that if people in China are realistic enough, they will see that it's in their interest. Frankly, we should have started this conversation 10 or 15 years ago. Uh, so we're in a race between the diplomacy of reunification, in my view, and uh, a real military threat from North Korea. We have another topic for you, Iran. More provocations from Iran. A U.S. destroyer in the Persian Gulf forced to alter course by an Iranian vessel acting aggressively. Now, a U.S. official telling Fox that the Iranian ship had its weapons manned and came within about 1,000 yards of this U.S. destroyer harassing the destroyer. This after that report we brought you yesterday, where we learned President Obama was cutting secret side deals in order to get his Iran nuclear deal done. This involved dropping charges against Iranian arms dealers, including one allegedly responsible for, responsible for the deaths of U.S. soldiers. What happens to the Iran nuke deal now, given these revelations about Obama side deals? Look, I don't, I'm not even sure we know all of the side deals yet or, or all of the things that were said to Iran, the assurances that were given uh, by Secretary Kerry and President Obama. This deal is a disgrace. Uh, it's, an, it's a diplomatic waterloo for the United States. Uh, I wish President Trump had abrogated it uh, in his inaugural address. Uh, it's only going to get worse after this. This uh, provocative behavior uh, by Iran uh, against our ship, this is just one more example of a continuous course of conduct over the past year and a half since the nuclear deal was signed. Every expectation by the Obama White House that the deal would change Iran's behavior, not only in the nuclear field, but across the board, have been proven wrong. And if this is the way Iran believes before it has nuclear weapons, imagine what it'll be once they get that capability. And let's also be clear, there really is a link between Iran and North Korea on ballistic missiles, on nuclear weapons. Whatever capability North Korea gets, uh, Iran can have the day after for a suitable Price. Wow, Ambassador, thank you so much for your time, sir. We love having you on. Come back thank soon. Thank you, Liz.